understand why they believe mandatory minimums are important. And people will start to drive toward man mandatory minimums are the problem. But yet... Uh, football is easier than doing this. <laughs> uh, football, I've been playing that since the fourth grade. So, uh, you know, I can do that without preparing. But... Uh, these meetings is, is, is a little bit out of my realm. You know, it's my second time coming to Capitol Hill. Um, you know, you want to feel prepared. Because a lot of us have been prosecutors in the past that, you know, work with victims, work with neighbors. You, you've got to do the research. You've got to come prepared. And when you're speaking on behalf of, of other people, you want to make sure that you bring the right voice to the table. And so that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, but make sure we're talking about funding. I, I do think as you continue um, what we're seeing now, we have so much technology that we get, uh, we get access to videos and it's on the news and people are starting to see what this looks like. And, it, and now those who, um, who weren't exposed to it before are, are forced to choose a side and forced to deal with this issue. And that's, that's what's dividing our country. The problem has been there and it's, it's always been there. Um, but it's becoming harder for us to sweep it under the rug. None, non-violent drug, drug offenders um, who are getting outrageous number of, of years in, in prison. Um, and one of, the, one of the problems that you have with that is the re-entry back into society, um, which I think becomes a, a huge problem. Um, Second Chance Act is another um, where we're trying to help those people that have been in prison. Um, when they come back, they have the support of trying to get, um, getting back into society, um, trying to get jobs, um, because, I mean, we all know that once you're in the system, it's hard to, to be a normal citizen. Um, you get discriminated against, like, with jobs, with housing, um, and different things like that. So. Private prisons is a huge um, problem, especially in the African American community, where you have um, private prisons who have contracts with with states um, to where they have to be um, at a certain capacity at all times. And if not, then the private prisons have the ability to sue the state. Um, so we we feel like that's one of the one of the things that leads to. Um, quotas by police officers where they have to f have to keep um, private prisons at a certain capacity. But that's okay. Thank okay, you. thanks. I got to run in a minute. Yeah, thank you. You got to fund the government. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a big I'm pretty optimistic about uh, my opportunity to lend a voice to this and and get some movement, but um, you know, I understand that that, that takes time and it takes um, pressure and, and you know, I'm not expecting overnight change. The problem didn't start overnight. I don't expect the solution to come overnight. Uh, but, but progress is at this point in time a must. You know, I, I feel like this is one of those turning points um, in which, you know, those who stand by will fall victim to whatever whatever comes down the pipe. When he was in Florida. Yeah. yeah. He, he had. I mean, he was on every billboard there was. I mean.